In order to integrate risk assessments across the defense security enterprise, automation is essential. It allows for the standardized collection of assessment data, rapid analysis of risk scenarios, and effective transformation of security data into useful knowledge. The Enterprise Protection Risk Management System, or EPRM, was established to do just this. EPRM is a program of record that is managed by the Air Force. It is a CIPRANET web-based program that guides users through the risk assessment process. It calculates risk based on asset, threat, and vulnerability relationships, and also provides reporting and management features. To use EPRM, users just need access to CIPRANET and a CIPRANET email address. EPRM can be used by both security professionals and by personnel with collateral duties in security roles. It enables them to conduct assessments in areas including OPSEC, InfoSec, PERSEC, and industrial security. Regardless of the type of assessment being conducted, EPRM uses a standardized workflow that walks the user through the steps necessary to conduct a complete risk assessment. These steps include answering profile questions that determine the type of assessment being conducted, identifying the assets that the organization is protecting, then evaluating the threats to those assets, and finally, assessing the asset's level of vulnerability to the threats based on the countermeasures currently in place. EPRM will then calculate the risk to the user's assets. From there, the tool will assist users in making recommendations that minimize the risk. Let's cover these steps in a little more detail, starting with Profile. In the Profile section, users provide administrative information about the unit that they are assessing. This includes items like unit size, location, and the type of assessment being conducted. This will set up the assessment so that the user is prompted later with the proper countermeasures. It will also begin to filter out content that may not be applicable to that particular organization. After Profile, the user moves to Critical Assets. In this section, EPRM asks the user to identify the organization's critical assets. The user will be presented with a list of asset types that are appropriate for the type of assessment being conducted. Since not all assets are of equal importance, users are prompted with questions to help quantify how critical each asset is to the organization. These criticality questions are drawn from policies and will calculate a criticality score on a five-point scale. Users are provided with explanations of each asset type and can enter comments regarding each selection. After the user has completed the critical asset section, they will move on to threat characterization. Based on the user's previous response for unit location and the types of critical assets they selected, EPRM will present them with a tailored list of the threat actors and threat methods that apply. Some of the threat source to method combinations will have preloaded severities based on predetermined threat baselines provided by the intelligence community. The user can then accept the baseline threat or change it. The user can also fill in the severity levels of threats which may not have been included in the baseline. To refine and adjust the threats, users should liaise with their local intelligence provider in order to make appropriate selections. As with assets, descriptions are provided and comments can be added justifying the selections. All right, the final step in the assessment process is the countermeasure section. Users will be presented with a tailored checklist of countermeasures drawn from policy and best practices. The content of this checklist is based upon the type of assessment being conducted and the selections made in the previous sections. The user will assess the vulnerability of the organization by indicating the presence or absence of the countermeasures in the checklist. To help the user through this process, the user can double-click on any countermeasure to review additional guidance on why a countermeasure is important, how they can check it, and where it can be found in policy. As with the asset and threat sections, comments can be added for each countermeasure. At this point, Data collection is complete, and users can proceed to the analysis section. In analysis, EPRM uses the data to perform a number of calculations. First, it calculates the vulnerabilities. Each countermeasure is linked, behind the program, with the threat methods that it mitigates. In the analysis section, the presence or absence of countermeasures will determine how vulnerable the assets are to the different threat methods. It's also important to understand that there will always be some residual vulnerability no matter how many countermeasures you may have in place. The analysis section will also calculate the risk for each scenario, 
based on an asset criticality multiplied by threat severity multiplied by vulnerability model. Scenarios that have a high asset criticality, high threat severity, and high vulnerability will result in the highest risk. There are several screens that then aggregate those scenarios to show which assets are absorbing the most risk, which threats are introducing the most risk, and which countermeasures will reduce the most risk. At this point, EPRM allows users to propose additional countermeasures that are not currently in place in order to reduce their vulnerability and consequently also reduce their risk. With each proposed countermeasure, EPRM will calculate the proposed risk which is the level of risk that will be achieved once the countermeasure has been implemented. Now the assessment is complete and users can run any number of reports in Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint to communicate the results of their assessment. They can also create a plan of action in EPRM in which they assign the implementation of countermeasures to other personnel along with a due date. As those countermeasures are implemented, the program will reflect the reduced risk. Users can also run aggregate analyses, which will generate an overall analysis of multiple assessments for a collection of units. Those analyses can also be generated across different assessment types, so that users can show the commander a single converged report covering multiple protection areas, such as OPSEC, InfoSec, PERSEC, and industrial security. Naturally, in addition to understanding the data that was entered into EPRM, it's important to understand what's happening behind the scenes of the program. It's also worth knowing that there are a variety of features available for users who want to manage the assessments being conducted across a collection of subordinate units. We'll cover those topics in another video. Thank you.